Still, it was Ian Fleming's 007 who would make the police pistol criminal a household name. In Rare's GoldenEye 007, we're introduced to the PPK from the moment we turn the console on. All right, y'all, welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a channel that I came across recently. So it's called Golden Guns. I gotta say, they don't have that many subscribers, which I'm kind of surprised about, because so far their videos look really freaking cool. So they kind of do like sort of gun reviews, but also kind of the history of some iconic firearms. And of course, with a name like that, they did the Walter PPK. So I'm pretty excited. You guys might have seen some of the shorts. I'll put some of the clips up here. But you guys might have seen some of the shorts that I did sort of emulating some of that James Bond stuff with my own PPK here. Now I am, I do have a suppressor on order, but I'm waiting for that to come and get approved and whatnot. So whenever I do get that, of course, I'm gonna be doing more shorts with this thing. But the PPK is just super cool. And I grew up playing Goldeneye and also watching all the, the Pierce Brosnan James Bond games. And I gotta say, I loved every second of it. Huge James Bond fan, and ended up watching all the movies, you know, before Pierce Brosnan, and of course, all the ones after that. So, huge James Bond fan. So, I'm really excited to check out this video and learn a little bit more about the, the PPK. I have a general understanding, but really not that much. So, yeah, let's get into it. Should be cool. Hello and welcome back to Golden Guns, nice. the only YouTube channel that compares GoldenEye's legendary weapons to their real-world counterparts. Dude, I'm so hyped. By the way, if you like this video, please subscribe. It helps the channel grow and lets me know mm. that I should keep doing these. Yep, go Today, over and subscribe to sure. Today, we take a deep dive into my personal favorite, the legendary Walther PPK. It's so cool. All right. Yeah, I really need a suppressor on mine. I'm just, I've been waiting way too long for that. Okay, I like the framing of this shot here. Our story begins in 1929 with the advent of Carl Walther's police pistol. Only a year later in 1930, Walther released the Police Pistol Criminal, or PPK for short. Oh, was it originally, was it originally a 22 caliber? Oh, 22 and 380. Huh, that's super interesting. I didn't actually know it came as a 22 originally. This one here is a 22 caliber. I do want a 380 just because, you know, it's a little bit more authentic and I'm, I'm sure that's what James Bond was actually using. But yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that. And of course, it's always really cool to see the actual prices. It looks like it's in dollars, so USD. Yeah, that's a... Pretty good deal. Back in the day, I'm sure that might have been, you know, pretty reasonably priced, but yeah, that's kind of, sure. it's always cool seeing that. The word criminal in his title refers to the plainclothes detectives, the criminal division, for yeah. whom the PPK was designed. Okay, that's cool. Compared to Walther's police pistol, it was slightly smaller and held one less round, but they both shared a feature that made them ideal for concealed carry. Hmm. The feature I'm talking about is this right here. The decocking lever. Yep, I was about to say. Nice. Pulling down the lever on the gun does three important things. First, it physically blocks the hammer from striking the firing pin. Secondly, it lowers the hammer, and finally, mm -hmm. it disables the trigger. It's this a nice design. This was extremely popular with police because they would often carry with a round in the chamber, Hell and yeah. this made it a lot safer to do so. Hmm. Like yeah. many things. To That's actually what I do with my Berettas right now whenever I'm carrying because yeah, they have a lot of the same safeties. They have the decocker. They have the firing pin block. And yeah, it's, it's a really nice design. And of course you feel comfortable carrying around in the chamber when you do have that first double action shot, which, you know, takes a lot more pressure than a standard single action or even a normal striker fired shot, like something out of a Glock. Germany before the war, the PPK also found its way into the hands of the Nazis. Hmm. For this reason, it also has the rather dubious honor of being the gun that killed Adolf Hitler. Pretty badass. In, in 1945, it was his personal PPK that Hitler would reach for when he chose to end his own I life. I didn't know that. Okay. Bougie. On a lighter note, it was also owned by Elvis Presley, who had engraved <laughs> okay. on his TCOB, or Taking Care of Business. That's really Still, it sick. was Ian Fleming's 007 there who made go. the police pistol criminal a household name. 
In his very first film, Dr. No, we see the moment Bond has issued his PPK. Is that M the first time? Of Bond's use of the Beretta 418, citing both its small Ew. caliber and nature to jam. He tells Bond from... Yeah, I was about to say, I love Beretta, but my gosh, I'm really glad they went with a PPK as opposed to this thing. M. He tells Bond, <laughs> from now on, you'll carry the Walther. Hmm. Walther's PPK would go on to accompany Bond for decades. I love the lack of trigger discipline, too. <laughs> they just kept it, too. In the 90s, <laughs> following Goldeneye, it was briefly replaced by the Walther P99. The P99 is cool, too. The P99, the P99 cool too. though, proved not to have the staying power, as it was replaced by the PPK again after only <laughs> three films. That's understandable. They're both very cool, though. In Rare's Goldeneye 007, we're introduced to the PPK from the moment we turn the console on. Yes, sir. The sound of it, too. It's so satisfying to use. Of course, it isn't called that. Likely wanting to avoid any trademark PP7, issues, the yep. team at Rare used pseudonyms to refer to each gun. <laughs> In this case, the PP7 is obviously supposed to represent the Walther PPK. Yeah, I love the that lack of case, pixels I'll refer and stuff. to the PP7 as the PPK from here on out. All right. After playing games where you spend an hour doing tutorials, just wondering when you're going to get a gun, it's refreshing to see that as the camera circles around Bond, the PPK comes into view, and we're set free to experience the game on our own. <laughs> You I gotta say, PPK. yeah, it's a little jarring going back to this game nowadays, especially like the AK-47 in this game looks like a black colored pencil. It just looks really funny to actually go back in time and look at the, the model. But I mean, the PPK, there's really not a whole lot to it. So, I mean, when you see it right there and you kind of see it, yeah, I mean, it's pretty accurate. I mean, you can tell it's it's definitely something close to a PPK. <laughs> You'll find the PPK accompanies Bond on almost every level of the game. Mishkin must have liked it so much that he just left it there on the table for Bond to look at. <laughs> I'll never understand that move. I, I didn't understand that either. Based on the nature of the mission, we get to use the PPK in both its suppressed and unsuppressed configuration. Such a good mission. I do want to be clear though, I use the word suppressed, not silent. It's not mm. like in the movies. A suppressor doesn't really silence the gun, it just makes it not as deafening. True. Now, in Goldeneye, if the suppressor is supposed to make Bond's actions more stealthy, it does seem to be used or emitted somewhat strangely. Hmm. On the frigate, for example, a mission where we're tasked <laughs> with releasing hostages, That's one would funny. imagine stealth would be of the essence. Yet, there we are, entering this delicate operation with an unsuppressed PPK. I didn't even consider that. I wonder what, I, I forgot what the sound difference was. Silo, a mission where stealth seems to go right out the window, we have the suppressor. I'm gonna put up some clips here. If they are, if they don't do it, and I'll probably know by the end of this video and when I'm doing the editing. But if they don't do it, then I'll put up some clips here so we can hear the difference. Having said that, it isn't entirely random. On most outdoor levels, the suppressor is omitted, while being fitted on most indoor levels. Control center and surface, however, seem to be exceptions to this. Hmm. Nitpicking aside, I like that the designers <laughs> offered this subtle but regular variety. Though I think you'd be hard Damn, pressed to call anything nice about Goldeneye monotonous, using the PPK in two different configurations does help to keep things feeling fresh. That is true. In a perfect world, we would be able to equip Ooh. or unequip the suppressor with a button press. <laughs> but this was not commonly seen in 1997, so it's certainly nothing to complain about. Yeah, that, that is Let's true. Let's take a look now at the ammunition used in Bond's PPK. The original Walther PPK was chambered in 32 ACP, but it's also mm. been offered in 38 and 22 caliber as well. Yep, he's got the same one now I 32 have. 32 auto is far from the largest caliber. 9 millimeter is preferred by most for its superior stopping power, mm. but it would simply be too powerful for the PPK's small frame. Because its size is part of the PPK's selling point, 32, 38, and 22 are all suitable compromises. Mm. In game, Bond's PPK is shown to take the same ammo as the DD44 and various okay. submachine guns such as the Klob and DK5. Interesting. This is technically incorrect, but yeah. for the purpose of game design, it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> a huge part of the I'll appeal to Gold Knight is its large selection of weapons. The game would have been a lot less enjoyable if players were forced to run all over Dude. the map to find each individual caliber. I gotta say, I loved the freaking guns in this. The RC P90, you guys know what that is. I mean, they were not as creative with the, the naming for that one. But yeah, I do recall a lot of these guns, and I was like, some of these are really freaking cool. It'd be nice to own these when I'm an adult. 
And nowadays, like, I see a gun, I'm like, that kind of looks like something that was in GoldenEye. And then it turns out it actually was. But it's kind of hard because, again, you do see it in this perspective, but most of the time you see it in a first-person perspective. And, of course, with the old crappy graphics, you can't really determine. The P90 is probably one of the most iconic ones, you know, aside with the uh, the, the Scorpion submachine gun. Players were forced to run all over the map to find each individual caliber. <laughs> Perhaps each crate contains multiple types of ammunition. Or perhaps I'm reading too much into oh, this. Oh, the Cougar Magnum. Now that we've looked at its 64-bit brethren, let's turn our attention to the real-world PPK. <laughs> All right, let's do it. The music. This is my Ooh. Walther PPKS. The S variant is almost identical to the PPK, with only minor revisions to keep it in line with American import requirements. Yeah. The Walther PPK features a single-stack magazine that holds seven rounds of 380. 8 rounds of 32 auto, or 10 rounds of 22. Hmm. As far as the actual function of the PPK, there isn't a lot to say. It's great. The design is well respected because <laughs> it well, is a great it works. design for that time too. When choosing a concealed carry pistol, the mo apologies if I look or sound sick. I'm sure I sound different, but I still have COVID, so there's that. So if you guys think my voice just sounds like deeper or something. Yeah, but yeah, I gotta say the design of the PPK is pretty freaking sweet. And this one actually got a uh, adapter so I can have the threaded barrel coming out. So whenever I do get the suppressor, I can chuck it on this thing. But yeah, of course, a lot of times when you see these these like things and like, you know, James Bond or what have you, it'll be the normal PPK like that. And they'll just chuck a suppressor on anyway. And they don't really think about how that actually works. But yeah, I am very, very excited to chuck one on here eventually. Even like the disassembly of this thing, I'm not gonna do like a whole like review. This is clear by the way. I'm not gonna do like a whole review of the PPK, but like even the disassembly where you just drop the trigger guard like that and then you can pull the slide off. It's just really, really interesting. And again, that double action, single action with the decocker. And it has some pretty nice sights too. So for a pistol that is that old, it's, I mean, I could definitely see myself carrying this thing today, not in the 22 caliber, but you know, it definitely gets the job done and it is accurate from the 381s that I have fired. Most important factor is reliability. The bottom line is it needs to go bang and hit the target every time. <laughs> True. You can see why this was a hit with police forces and copied around the world. Speaking of copies, uh, the Makarov, there were yep. a lot. The Soviet Makarov, yep. which is used by Omarov, by the way. <laughs> and the Got one of those P64. too. I also happen hmm. to have this Czechoslovakian CZ-50. Ooh. Being a PP copy, the CZ-50 is a tiny bit larger and heavier than my PPK. Might and have to the get slightly that. heavier frame does a very nice job of managing the recoil. Huh. While I like the CZ, okay. I have to say that overall, the fit and finish just doesn't compare to the Walther. Having said that, it's not hmm. a bad copy, and for the money, I actually would recommend it. is so pretty the fun too. For accuracy? Well, it's fine. With the short barrel of the PPK, you shouldn't expect to pick off any targets from a distance, but that's not what it's intended for. Mm. It's a close quarters weapon, and for self-defense, it's perfect. And James Bond is so how perfect. So the stopping power? Again, it's fine. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not the most powerful <laughs> gun on the market, but it doesn't need to be. The whole point of this design is to be easy to carry and reliable in a pinch. And in True. those areas, it excels. So this is the part of the video where I usually would say, should you own one? And then say something like, well, it depends. Oh, but yeah. in this case, if you're a gun guy and you don't own one, uh, what are you doing? Just go buy one. Exactly. But in all seriousness, Especially the, the PPK is a classic. If you're thinking about getting one, I'd highly recommend it. It's rugged, Same. reliable, practical, a great choice Good for self-defense. What more do I need to say? <laughs> and indeed, what else can be said about this legend of a gun? Whether you know it as the PPK or the PP7, <laughs> whether you first saw it in the hands of Sean Connery so or cool. Pierce Brosnan, it's a classic through and through. The one, the only, Walther PPK. Hmm. I'm getting some Ahoy vi vibes here with like the video and like the sort of editing style and the narration. Yeah, definitely cool. Of course, I'll put that original video down in the description so you guys can go and check it out. But that was awesome. I wanna see what other videos they have. I'm definitely going to hit that subscribe button. I'm surprised I haven't subscribed when I actually put that video on my list. But yeah, they have, uh, what, six videos right now. They even did a video about the Cougar Magnum, which I'm going to have to check out. But yeah, they haven't uploaded recently, but it looks like uh, he did an update video where I guess he's saying he's busy at the moment. But definitely a cool video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. 
I definitely love checking it out. As far as the nostalgia, that's always a good time because again, this game was just iconic. I played so many hours of this game using all the different cheats and all the different guns. So if you guys grew up playing this game or if you played it later on, then definitely let me know what sort of memories you have with this game specifically. Or also, how you got interested in the PPK if you own one or if you're thinking of owning one or if you're just a big fan of it like I am because it is very iconic and definitely for me my first exposure to that was the Pierce Brosnan films and of course GoldenEye in and of itself. But yeah you guys know I love checking out guns so I might try and see if there's some other like sort of historical or background videos of some of the guns that I own already because that'd be kind of cool as well especially like the the Makarov or something that'd be kind of legit but let me know what you guys think this was a fun little video to do especially now that I have COVID it's something that you know it's just it's just fun for me to do so hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well um, and again let me know what you guys think about the PPK or this channel or GoldenEye or James Bond a lot of really interesting topics in one video. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, hit that thumbs up. I appreciate it. Definitely check out the Discord if you guys want to have a chat with other members of the community because the Discord is a pretty interesting place. Sometimes it gets a little chaotic, but the mods do a pretty good job of rounding everybody and keeping it pretty simple. So definitely go and check that out. If you guys want merch, you can go and check out the merch in the video description as well. But yeah, hopefully you guys just enjoyed the video. Subscribe, stick around. Thank you for watching. That is it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.